Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Sipsey, and as always, I have the super pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast, that's Matt Schiffman. How are you today, Matt? I'm good, Brian. It's always good to be back uh, doing Horse Center with you, although it isn't good to be back with some of the news from racing since our last show. Yeah, that's true, Matt. Unfortunately, we had a very sad story, a sad uh, ending to uh, a really nice horse, Medina Spirit, uh, the horse who finished first in the Kentucky Derby. Uh, we're still waiting for the official result, but there's a good chance he will be named the official winner of the Kentucky Derby this year. He passed away tragically uh, after workout Monday at Santa Anita, where he collapsed after the work and uh, died of an apparent heart attack. Uh, Matt, a uh, truly sad ending for a very, very good horse. A very nice horse, Brian, absolutely. Uh... Uh, who has been, you know, embroiled in controversy, certainly having not to do with uh, uh, his record uh, as a, as a three-year-old um, and a great story, uh, uh, a horse that was a bargain basement, uh, first sold for a thousand dollars and then resold uh, in auction again for only $35,000. Now the winner of uh, over $3.5 million, as we said, the Kentucky Derby, the awesome again, second most recently in the Breeders' Cup Classic, uh, and, and third in the Preakness, so many great performances on the track, but, uh, you know, here we are again with um, Dina Spirit in the middle of some pretty bad optics for horse racing. Yeah, I, I agree with you, Matt. And I, I'm, I really want to talk about Medina Spirit more than anything because I think he deserves it. A horse who uh, he ran 10 times. He actually, his, he debuted at Los Alamitos almost exactly a year ago. He, he was just a few days short when he died of that one year anniversary of his debut, a winning debut. And uh, after that, he ran in nothing but stakes. This horse won five out of 10 races, four seconds, a third. Matt, he was second in the Shams, first in the Robert B. Lewis, a game winner over uh, Hot Rod Charlie there, second in the San Felipe. Both of those se early seconds, by the way, came to Life is Good, who we now know how good he is. Second in the Santa Anita Derby, first in the Kentucky Derby, third in the Preakness, won the Shared Belief, won the Awesome again, a really game, hard trying to the wire, second in the Breeders' Cup Classic. So a terrific career for a, a, a horse who very well may be named uh, three-year-old champion. I think that's... Uh, uh, the least of our concerns right now, but him and uh, Essential Quality will have an in interesting vote for the Eclipse Award for the three-year-old champion, Matt. But uh, Medina Spirit, like you said, he, he didn't come from uh, uh, a really great uh, pedigree. He, he wasn't uh, a, a horse who was uh, everybody was uh, trying to get, but uh, he had a great one-year, one-calendar-year career, and it's it's sad to see him go. It does create controversy, the Kentucky Derby, and now the uh, the sudden death of Miss Dina Spirit. It, it doesn't look good for horse racing. From a mainstream media perspective, Matt, uh, uh, they love roasting horse racing, and this is one way to uh, go after horse racing, and specifically trainer Bob Baffert once again. Yeah, and, and let's face it, Brian, it's an easy way for these mainstream um, media outlets, for, for politicians, for senators to, to, to get some attention, get some clicks on their websites, get uh, ratings on their nightly news show. It, it's easy because this horse is the horse that crossed the finish line first in the biggest race in our country in the Kentucky Derby. Yeah, yeah, that's, it's true, Matt. The Kentucky Derby is uh, what... The one race that most everyone sees, Medina Spirit uh, finished first. He tested positive after the race. Uh, what, seven months later, he passes away. So a sad story, a tragic ending for a very good horse. And, and I'm not here to uh, either defend trainer Bob Baffert and his record over the years or, or roast him today. Uh, I, I would love to get more uh, information uh, of how Medina Spirit, why he, he died. Hopefully that'll happen. And hope, hopefully there are real answers to why he died. Uh, we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, certainly. But, you know, it, it does point out, uh, uh, you know, in my eyes, a big issue with racing right now is, you know, that it's the lack of action about uh, issues that come up. Uh, and, and I get it. You know, it, it is certainly easier to do nothing than to make hard call hard calls or whatever the call needs to be in a particular situation. 
Yeah, yeah, I agree with you there, Matt. And I think racing is is at a a tricky spot in that, um, uh, you know, it, it's not the sport that it once was. It's not as popular. It's not as accepted by uh, the general public as it once was. And uh, you know, to to bite the hand that feeds you, so so to speak, as far as uh, really going after. Um, I'm, I'm talking most about trainers that cheat, but uh, it's hard to do. And, and again, this, this was not about Bob Baffert so much for me. What we're talking about right now is about Medina spirit and recognizing uh, that we lost a, a truly outstanding horse. Matt, he won the Kentucky Derby in 2021. We're starting our early search for the 2022 winner of the Kentucky Derby. We did uh, our first top 10, uh, it was about three weeks ago. And, and since then there's been some interesting races, including last week's Remsen. And I know the Remsen hasn't produced a Kentucky Derby winner of late. It's been some years since, since the good old days for the Remsen. But I, I, was, uh, I ended up being pretty hopeful of what I saw from the top two, Mo Donegal and Zandon in, in this week's Remsen. Yeah, it was really good to see that in my eyes, Brian, as somebody that, you know, uh, lives 45 minutes from Aqueduct to see the Remsen have a really exciting uh, finish. Two horses now that are looking like they have a lot of potential to move on uh, and be serious contenders on the Kentucky Derby Trail. We'll see over the next uh, next uh, three, four months how they uh, how they fare. But horses that handled the distance well, uh, had plenty of run left after that mile and eighth, after those two turns on that aqueduct track, which can be uh, so tiring. Um, so uh, they, showed some, they showed some good things in that stretch battle that Modonegal uh, uh, came out on top. Yeah, Modonegal came out on top by a nose. People are going to dismiss the two, I think, very quickly, Matt, when they talk about the 153 and three-fifths final time. But as you said, Aqueduct is a, a tiring track. It was not fast. The, the best horses, uh, some of the best horses in, in the nation were running 136 and change in their big older horse races. So, uh, you know, I, I'm not uh, dismayed by that 153 and change final time. And, and the early fractions were just so slow. Uh, the fact that they did run 153 wasn't all that bad. In fact, it was almost two seconds faster than the Philly version, the Demoiselle, where Nest won. They also distanced themselves from the rest of the field quite quickly, uh, where they were together uh, uh, outside the eighth hole, and, and they ended up about 10 lengths ahead of the third place finisher. I don't think there's anybody in the rest of the Remsen, but I think these two, Mo Donicles only had three races now. Uh, and he figured to like nine furlongs and he was coming out of a, a, a nice win. But Zandon, especially for, for a horse who only had a six furlong sprint in which he won uh, uh, a couple months, eight weeks before the Remsen, I thought that was a really, really game uh, and, and full of potential performance for him to stretch out at nine furlongs and run as well as he did down the stretch, the son of Upstart, trained by Chad Brown. Yeah, I agree, Brian. And, and in the preview of the race that we did on Horse Center, we, we did talk about the fact that, you know, can, uh, can Zandon get the distance, can a son of upstart, you know, a young, a young uh, sire who, you know, uh, we don't haven't seen a lot of offspring yet. Could he handle the distance? And, and he very impressively proved that he could. Uh, it's a horse that Chad Brown seems to be very high on. Uh, at this point. And as you said, that time in the race wasn't uh, important to me. What was important is that both of those horses had plenty of a uh, run in them and plenty of comp uh, competition in them down the stretch. Yeah, they, they both were super competitive because it was a great stretch run. Uh, it was an interesting stretch run too, in that uh, it sure looked like uh, Ryder Irat Ortiz brought Mo Donegal over to, uh, to take the race to Zandon. Uh, it wasn't like what happened a day before, Matt, at Aqueduct, but uh, certainly a little bit of race riding there by Arad Ortiz Jr. on Mo Donegal. Yeah, I guess you can use that word race riding. You know, it typically uh, uh, is a, uh, a catchphrase that's used when a rider is being overly aggressive, uh, maybe inappropriately in uh in a situation and that certainly was the case in the ramps and i will tell you brian 
that uh, when I watched the race and the inquiry went up and I saw the replay, there was absolutely, absolutely no question in my mind that Mo Donegal should have been disqualified. Uh, Irad Ortiz had crossed the line once again uh, with uh, safe right, uh, race riding. He was overly aggressive, uh, uh, flinging the reins into the face of Johnny V, into the face of Mo Donegal, leaning, leaning with his body clearly to the left out of the saddle uh, to uh, get right on top of Johnny V and on the horse, uh, just, you know, absolutely inappropriate uh, race riding. Um, and, and you alluded to the, the race the day before where it, it was just mind boggling what uh, Irad did um, in, in a, you know, a lower level kind of race where he clearly had the best horse in the race. And, and it, it was early in the race that uh, Irad was in the middle of the track. Uh, the, the, the second place horse was on the rail and, and, and heading down the, 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 the back stretch. Irad decided that, and I don't know what he was thinking, quite frankly, Brian, but he decided that he would change his position, move from the middle of the track closer to the rail. I get that, that's fine, you know, to, to save some ground. But in doing so, uh, he did it abruptly and suddenly and right in front of the other horse who was written, ridden by an apprentice to the extent that that horse stumbled and uh, uh, Omar Hernandez Moreno was unseated and, and took a nasty, nasty looking spill, Brian, uh, tumbling and getting close to the rail. But fortunately, he was fine. Horse was fine. But bottom line, the combination of, of that egregious uh, 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 mistake by Irad and, and as the steward says, his actions in uh, uh, the Remsen resulted in a 30 day, 30 day, Brian, uh, suspension that Irad is not going to contest. He will take the 30 days off. I'll let you talk a little bit, but but I got a lot more to say about this, Brian. Yeah, the, the, the Remsen, I, I wasn't as sure when I, when I saw the horses run the stretch run as you were that uh, Mo Donical should have come down. I, I thought maybe that he should have, but then, then I saw the uh, a still shot, especially, but uh, uh, the head on where uh, you could see his reins, his elbow uh, pretty much in Johnny V's chest, uh, bothering uh, Johnny V riding Zandon. And, and, and I agree with you, Mo Donegal probably should have come down in that Remsen, but he didn't. Um, I wondered if maybe the uh, outrage of Irad's ride in the Remsen had something to do with what transpired the day before. And that's only natural, but uh, yeah, it, it looked like what he did in the Remsen was a little bit more. And considering that Zandon was coming back again and the final margin in the Remsen was only a nose, uh, very easily could have been taken down. I think both are nice horses and both are horses that are going to move up. Neither were in our original top 10, and uh, I think they might deserve a spot. I'm almost higher on Zandon for what he did in the stretch of that Remsen, and again, off of only a six furlong uh, six furlong debut performance uh, a little while before. As far as Ortiz on Friday, I, my only hope is that he just never saw the other horse and rider as he was making the sharp, sharp left-hand turn to get to the rail from the outside with his speed horse in that eighth race on Friday at Aqueduct. It was awful. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, we're lucky and everyone's lucky and especially the horse and the jockey. Uh, that went down because it could have been uh, really ugly. But, but as you said, both were okay. Um, uh, the, the comment uh, after the race was Grand Cacique angled in with reckless abandon. And, and that's, that's pretty much all you can say about uh, what Irad got. This 30 year old uh, native of Puerto Rico is certainly, if not the best rider in America, one of the best. And this was just an awful two days for Irad. And, and maybe he's got to rethink uh, uh, his uh, riding style just a little bit. It's, you got to be aggressive to be a great rider, but uh, he certainly took it too far on Friday and, Sac uh, Friday and Saturday at Aqueduct. 30 days, you know, we're used to five day or seven day suspension for riding infractions. So uh, the Naira came down hard on Irad. It's a 30-day calendar 
uh, suspension. So it's not going to miss 30 days of rest uh, racing necessarily. And this is a time of year where if you're going to miss 30 days, it's not the worst time of year to miss 30 days. But that's a pretty big slap on the wrist. And, and, and I, I think Naira did the right thing. Oh, I, I absolutely do think they did the right thing with the suspension, but I, I, I just have to scratch my head, Brian, about what goes on in the steward stand and, and the decisions that they make and, and that now the, the decisions that they make are, are based on so much subjectivity. It, it constantly seems to come down to a decision about uh, 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 did, did the the foul cause, you know, a horse to be cost a place in the finish. They seem to be constantly making decisions about how the rest of the race would play out. And you, and in my eyes, you just can't do that, Brian, because horses respond to, you know, these kind of aggressive situations in different kinds of kinds of ways. Some of them will fold up and quit. Some of them will, you know, the the, the bumping just, you know, sends them off stride and they can't get back into motion. Others, and, and, and it may have even been the case in the Remsen that uh, maybe Zandon responded to the aggressive nature and got angry and, and dug back in a little bit more. But to me, it can't be up to the stewards to make these decisions like, uh, you know, we'll leave the place a finish as it is, but then we'll call the jockey in and we'll talk to him or we'll find the jockey or we'll give him a suspension. It's the betters that end up coming up short in all of this, Brian. And, and, and you know, last week we're talking about these two situations, Med Medina Spirits uh, passing away and, and this suspension with Ira. We're talking about who many people consider the best jockey in the country and the best trainer in the country in the spotlight in, in really negative ways. And, and, and that's not what we need in racing right now. Not what we need in racing right now, Matt. And, and I'm, I was waiting for you to, to mention the betters because in, inconsistency of the stewards and, and you can add the, uh, the betting uh, issues of the Breeders' Cup to that list you've had. It's been a, it's been a tough month for racing and uh, yeah, uh, the betters are among those mostly affected by uh, everything we just talked about. Matt, uh, I, I want to jump back into Derby Doings. First, I should remind everyone to subscribe to our YouTube uh, channel here on Horse Racing Nation. It really helps Matt and I out, and we appreciate it. But I want to jump back towards the Derby Doings because there were other big performances uh, since we came out with that top 10 recently. Uh, one you have to talk about, Matt, is Smile Happy, the son of Run Happy, trained by Ken McPeak. I looked terrific. And he was, in fact, in our early top 10 off just that maiden performance at Keeneland. He looked terrific at Keeneland. He looked even better winning the Kentucky Jockey Club at Churchill Downs. Yeah, he, he sure did. Uh, and we talked about the son of Run Happy, uh, how uh, uh, impressive he was going uh, a long distance in his maiden special weight win and, and how we expected, you know, as a son of Run Happy, for him to continue to improve and develop uh, uh, as he turns three and down the line. And, and, and even just in that short amount of time from his maiden win, wow, what a performance in the, in the Kentucky Jockey Club to win by over three lengths uh, uh, against a pretty nice field, against the horse uh, classic causeway that we had mentioned in our early top 10 as a horse for Brian Lynch that, that um, showed a lot of potential. Yeah, we had both of them in our top 10. Those were the two we had in our top 10 from the race. So it's nice to see him run one, two. Classic Causeway, I think, ran another good race, but he was no match for Smile Happy. I also think the third horse uh, in that race, White Abario, is one to watch too. Uh, trained by Safi Joseph. He, he certainly had some traffic issues there uh, turning for home, and then he came on nicely to be third. So I think Classic Causeway and White Abario are nice horses, but Smile Happy was the class of this race. He's got pedigree to run a distance on that female side too, Matt. There's that good Buckland Farm uh, breeding that we've been watching for the last 40 years and Smile Happy should be a horse who can get 10 furlongs. He certainly looks like it. And two races into his career, he deserves to be, I think, one of the Kentucky Derby favorites as we head into the new year, Matt. Another horse I was impressed with uh, ran the same week that we came out with our top 10. I think it was just a day or two later. And I, I really liked what I saw from Rocket Dog, Matt. I, I like the name, by the way, Rocket Dog. 
I'm also rooting uh, deep down. I got to admit, we don't, we're, we're not always supposed to talk about our rooting interests, but I am rooting for Classic Empire to be a nice sire uh, for, for multiple reasons. And I think Classic Empire could still be a very nice sire. It's still pretty young in his stallion career. Rocket Dog, trained by Brad Cox, made a most uh, impression, impressionable uh, debut at Churchill Downs, Matt, running a fast seven furlongs impressively. Yeah, a seven furlong debut, which we've talked about in the past, uh, isn't, al isn't always the easiest thing to do for a, t a two year old, but uh, this Frank Fletcher owned uh, uh, horse did it, did it easily, winning by more than uh, uh, five lengths. And of course, we know uh, Frank Fletcher uh, likes to name all of his horses and put the name Rocket into the name of all of his horses because that, they're named after his dog. Uh, uh, that was named Rocket. That's right, Matt. And, and I think this this horse might be a, a potential top dog or, or a real Rocket as a runner. Uh, he made a very quick move. He was kind of back in the field briefly and then made a quick move. And I think Rocket Dog is a horse uh, that moves right into my top 10, at least for the Kentucky Derby next year. Brad Cox, there's no doubt in my mind the way he's going, he's going to win a Kentucky Derby sooner or later. Heck, he might Still have won a Kentucky Derby from this year. We don't know, but uh, Rocket Dog, one to watch from the Brad Cox barn. All right, Matt, I think it's a relatively slow week of racing. The Low South Futurity we could have talked about uh, on the Kentucky Derby trail, but a five horse field with a heavy, heavy favorite Messier uh, didn't really appeal to me so much. We went with the Poinsettia. And the Poinsettia, Matt, is a, uh, you know, it's a listed race. Uh, Oakland Park was not usually open. It's not usually open this time of year, but they're opening early. And I think this has a nice little field of three-year-olds, three-year-olds who are trying to become very good older horses. It's led by a grade one winner in super stock. Yeah, and like you said, uh, 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 Oakland Park, which has opened their meet like a month early, uh, is coming up with new stakes races. This is a $150,000 race for three-year-olds going two turns, going a mile and a 16th. And yeah, you mentioned, uh, you, you mentioned super stock, uh, um, it's clearly going to be the favorite in this race for Steve Asmussen, uh, last seen running third in the Oklahoma Derby. He was second in the Ellis Park Derby, fourth in the Iowa Derby recently, but back on the Kentucky Derby trail for last year's Derby was the winner of the Arkansas Derby, um, has been off a little bit, has been off since September. Uh, yeah, well, there, he, he had that one race recently out at Zia Park, Matt, so Superstock, okay. uh, super yeah, got that one win. You, you probably missed it. it. It was a race worth missing, basically, the Zia <laughs> Park Derby. They, they gave away some money out there, but Superstock was the winner in a short field, and it was very impressive in my eyes. Having said that, he's won two of his last three with the Ellis Park Derby and the Zia Park Derby. Uh, but I don't like him. I, I want to beat this favorite, Matt. I, I'm with you. I think that Arkansas Derby really turned out to be a non-heat race. And his win in the million-dollar grade one Arkansas Derby should be looked on in, in a different way than most Arkansas Derby winners should be looked upon. He uh, finished 16th in the Kentucky Derby. And uh, despite two wins pretty recently, I, I don't think he's uh, anywhere near that grade one winner. I, I like Flash of Mischief better myself. Flash of Mischief is a horse who finished ahead of him a couple starts back in the Oklahoma Derby. I thought his last race winning the Delta Mile was his best race yet. This is a horse who travels all over the place for trainer Carl Broberg, just keeps running big races. He's got a plenty of speed. Uh, second in the Iowa Derby, won the St. Louis Derby, beat older horses last time at Delta Downs. I think he, in fact, is the horse to beat, and he beat Superstock in the Oklahoma Derby. Yeah, Brian, you know, and it's Carl Broberg who, you know, wins races all over the country, never afraid to ship and, and compete where, uh, where he finds the right spot. And that's what he does back, best picking spots for uh, his horses to run in. He's got a really good record, 11 starts, five wins, four seconds, um, uh, you know, rarely, you know, the Derby being one of those off the board uh, finishes, uh, Certainly a contender in there. It's got speed. There might be a little bit of other speed in there. I don't know if it's the quality of, of flash of mischief, though. 
Yeah, Basha Mischief has been very good. In fact, he's he he's been right there in all of his dirt starts this year. So, and he just keeps running good races, uh, race after race. One horse we should talk about in here, Matt, is Defeater because I think if anybody really became a graded stakes winner next year, Defeater might be a good option. Trained by Tom Amos, the son of uh, Union Rags, was not up to the challenge in the uh, Oklahoma Derby when he finished behind. Flash of Mischief and Superstock, but uh, he came back with a really big win at Churchill Downs. He probably needed that Oklahoma Derby. Only five lifetime starts, but that win at Churchill Downs points him out as a big threat in here. Yeah, I agree, Brian. And, and Defeater is the horse that I like in this race because, you know, looking at probably being the, the third choice in the race, you said, uh, but, you know, behind a heavy favorite likely in Superstock, so should come with uh, uh, decent odds. Uh, Defeater is a horse that, uh, to me, has flashed some potential, was a debut winner way back uh, almost a year ago in January at the fairgrounds, um, has had a lot of layoff lines uh, in the course of things, and I think uh, trainer Tom Amos is figuring him out. He was second to, to Speaker's Corner at, in Saratoga in the course of all that. I, and I, like you, Brian, really like that allowance win at Churchill by seven lengths. And maybe, maybe, and we'll need this to happen. Maybe Tom Amos has got this horse going in the right direction and he can put a couple of big races together. Should get a good pace set up for his closing move. Yeah, and I, that, there I'm going to have to disagree with you, Matt, because I looked at this field. Uh, there's seven in here, folks, and I, I only saw two two possible speed horses. No one else really wants to be on the lead in here. In my eyes, myopic, I think is a uh, cheaper early speed. And he was defeated quite handily by defeater last time. And that trick still down's allowed. I think defeater will get that. I think him and flash of mischief will be vying for second choice, but I agree with you that super stock will be the favorite, uh, but defeater coming off that big win at Churchill certainly has to draw some money. And he, he could be the horse that becomes the best of the group. Uh, now only two of five lifetime after a pretty lengthy, uh, layoff this summer. Uh, one long shot I want to mention, Matt, is Ram. Uh, another name that I, I like. I liked Rocket Dog and I like Ram, the name. I don't know why I'm talking about names, but <laughs> this uh, this son of American Pharaoh trained by D. Wayne Lucas has been a hard hitter. He, he has some nice allowance races at Churchill Downs, including a win that got him into the Preakness, where he ran dead last, of course. But uh, five straight races he's been second or third he's been knocking on the door and there were some pretty good horses there that he was running against uh 12 to 1 on the morning line i think ram coming off a, a good a very good second against older horses at churchill downs is a very interesting long shot in here for me yeah i noted those things too brian so i agree with that yeah ram is my long shot but my top pick is flash of mischief matt i think you already told us your top pick yeah defeater is my top pick in the race all right, so we're both going against the favorite, which I definitely like, Matt. Let's try to beat Superstock. That's Saturday's poinsettia at Oaklawn Park, and it's good to see Oaklawn Park back and running again, Matt. Tough show. We talked about Irad's, uh, Irad's dirty deeds, for lack of a better word, and we <laughs> talked about, um, well, we, we look back at really an outstanding 12-month career for a, a horse who had... Uh, who had spirit, he had fighting spirit. Medina spirit never gave up. That's why he finished uh, first or second in every single one of his 10 races, other than the Preakness in which he was third, uh, even in the Breeders' Cup Classic where he, he was defeated in his last race, Matt Medina spirit was coming on and was actually out finishing essential quality and Hot Rod Charlie, his uh, the, 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 the best three-year-olds in the nation, at least going farther than a mile. So. Uh, Sad to see Medina Spirit go. Sad week for racing. Can I get a parting shot from you, Matt? Absolutely, Brian. We'll uh, 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 certainly hope for uh, uh, better things going on uh, in uh, racing to close out the year. And of course, I want to thank our producer, Ben Wilkie, for putting together the show. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks to Ben Wilkie. Thanks to Candace Curtis for the race graphic. Thanks for all you watching, Matt, and I sure do appreciate you tuning in each and every week. Also, we got to thank our sponsor, Matt, the best contest site out there. That's Derby Wars. It's kind of a slow week or two here uh, on the racing landscape. So I think next week we're going to do a little bit different uh, show for you folks. We are going to talk about the best, as Horse Center sees it, the best of 2021 next week. And then the week after, we get to talk about a huge opening day 
at Santa Anita. So don't miss those here on Horse Center. We'll see you soon. Thank you.